Last week we discussed pandemics. We reviewed things like the plague, the cholera, smallpox. Uh, we reviewed the way that humanity has cooperated to contain these infections. Uh, we then changed gears and um, tried to ascertain whether the world was indeed becoming more peaceful and less violent. Let's assume for a moment that this is indeed the case. We still have one problem and that is nuclear arms. They have been used in the past, they kill more people than any other weapon and more and more countries have them and, and others are trying to acquire them. So I wonder whether nuclear proliferation is yet another centripetal dynamic intermixing our fates. Um, this week we have Professor Ding Li Shan from Fudan University in China uh, to help us uh, review the history of nuclear arms, attempts to um, and their proliferation and where we are in 2013. Here's Professor Shen. Well, I'm going to present uh, my part of, of the course for global civics entitled uh, Nuclear Disarmament and Proliferation. Please note, I'm talking about the nuclear stuff. Nuclear disarmament meaning those nuclear weapon states are expected to cut, to eliminate their nuclear weapon. And the nuclear non-proliferation, meaning those non-nuclear weapon states are expected not to develop a nuclear weapon. If they don't develop a nuclear weapon, it is termed as non-proliferation. If they proliferate, meaning they build nuclear weapon by themselves, indigenous development, which is a kind of nuclear proliferation. Or oh, they get nuclear weapon technology, the entire body of nuclear weapon from one established nuclear weapon state, which is a direct proliferation, from, from an established nuclear weapon state to a non-nuclear weapon state. That used to happen between Soviet Union and China. Soviet Union gave all nuclear weapon material technology short of an entire nuclear weapon. This is a bigger nuclear proliferation. That, that's helpful for Chinese national security. So when today we enjoyed non proliferation enjoyed proliferation and ask others not to proliferate, it's a kind of contradiction. Modern. It's due to national interest. When we didn't have nuclear weapon, we are deterred by um, America and other aggressors. So we need, we would not say non proliferator please don't give this to us. We need it badly to counter the US nuclear bluff. After we have acquired it, we have continued to say, you continue to threat us. So not only we, any others who are deterred by America are entitled to have a nuclear weapon. The more nuclear weapon states, the better. Because Americans will be less able to threaten us. <laughs> now, we further reform our mind. We, we think that's enough. We have enough nuclear weapon states. So newer nuclear weapon states may not only defend their country with their nuclear weapon. They could threaten us, just like Americans used to threaten us, or continue to threaten us, with their new nuclear weapons. So we don't want them to have. It's for our national security interest. But the other country may not buy this argument. They consider that your nuclear weapon has the capability for you to threaten us. So why I cannot have the capability to deal your threat and I do not intend to threat, but I would need to have the capability to counter threat with the same kind of weapon. It's very difficult to counter argue with this. We can only say the proliferation would make the region and, and the world unstable. So I'm going to present the case why we see nuclear weapon proliferation. How nuclear weapon started, not from China, even not from the United States. We all know US first acquired nuclear weapon, but the United States 
was not the first to build nuclear weapon. It is Nazi Germany. German have produced many Nobel physics uh, prize uh, owner, winner, laureates. German are great people. Germany is great. But they abused their tyrants by invading other country and by organizing their nuclear scientists to build a nuclear weapon. If they succeeded in acquiring a nuclear weapon before American would do, the world would be completely different. So America was pressed by Nazi Germany to do it, and America succeeded in slowing German nuclear weapon program, and America succeeded. America dropped two bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, successfully uh, expedited the process of winning the Pacific War, a major part of the Second World War. We won, partly due to our side, the Allied force, Munchi, China, Soviet Union, United States, defeated J Japan and Nazi Germany. Not entirely due to nuclear weapon, but importantly, due to nuclear weapon. And the Soviet Union was scared. America had this super weapon. The US thought America's acquisition of nuclear weapon could empower America to superpower status, and the Soviet Union would subject to American superpower status. So the US is the only superpower. Some story goes saying, some U U.S. nuclear weapon scientists, those who can access to the secrets of American nuclear program, secretly leaked American nuclear weapon technology intelligence to Soviet Union. Mr. Rosenthal and his wife was tried, sentenced, and persecuted to death. They were viewed as American communists. They were understood that they have the idea that if only one country, namely America, to acquire nuclear weapon, that's not good for the world. The world is not balanced. We need to have a safe world, need to have a balanced world, so some country else need to have nuclear weapon to balance American power. And they passed nuclear weapon tech intelligence to Soviet Union. It's a story. It may or may not be true. If it's true, it, it will deserve us to ponder. If Chinese would have the idea <laughs> that it's not good for China to have nuclear weapon only, we should pass nuclear weapon technology to Vietnam, Philippines, to, for China not to have a dominant role to play in the world. I think this Chinese will be viewed as a betrayed of, of China. But some Americans, they do believe no good for anyone to be the only uh, superpower. That's their rationale. We need to understand even if we disagree. Most people disagree without understanding it. As a teacher, I need to understand them and also sympathize them. Just like uh, we need others to sympathize us. We develop a nuclear weapon to counter America's aggressionism. And uh, we save nuclear weapon for retaliating others, any possible first use of nuclear weapon against us. And we succeed. After acquiring Chinese nuclear weapon, American government has never openly threatened China, mainly China, with their nuclear weapon. And before, we acquired our nuclear weapon, American repeatedly to threat China with using American nuclear weapon in the first place against mainland China. America still has a war plan to use nuclear weapon first against mainland China, but it does not speak openly. That's the difference. So we feel less verbal threat, 
But the physical threat, the tangible threat, is always there as long as America has nuclear weapons. Similarly, the physical threat, the tangible threat from China to America that China may first use our nuclear weapon against America is there. So America cannot trust China. You have the capability. I have problem. So Soviet Union started. China was threatened by American General MacArthur in Korean War while commanding the UN force openly threatened to drop a line of American nuclear weapon in the, on the territory of China. For, for this, he was sacked by his president, Truman. Truman considered that only I can order to use nuclear weapon. You can not. You work for me. You did not observe my instruction. So you are fired. But that did not make China feel any secure. China de became determined to develop nuclear weapons because you are threatened. Otherwise, we think nuclear weapon is a paper tiger. <laughs> no more, it's a real tiger. And uh, India sent a force to invade southern Tibet, Zhaonan, when we fought against America in Korea. So British colonizers draw McMahon line in favor of India, without any Chinese government recognition. But the British colonizer did not send a force to occupy it. Indian government sent, after it got independence in 1947. They sent a force in 19, early 1950, when we were busy with America. So they invaded, and we defeated them in 1962. So they feel hurt, they thought, it's their land, already in their hand. Why, brother, Hindi Chini, Hindi Chini, Pai Pai, Zhongguo, Indu, Shi, Xiong Di, Zhongguo, Shi, Ge Ge, Tam, Shi, Di Di. They recognize that we are elder brother. Why, elder brother, humiliated them. And you soon have nuclear weapon. 1962, we defeated them, and in 1964, we exploded our first nuclear weapon. What they can do? Moving. The original nuclear program, which is for peaceful purpose only, for multiple purpose, including military purpose. Their national discourse, narrative is, it's their land. They were hurt. And the guy who hurt them has nuclear weapon. They should have nuclear weapon to defend them. In our narrative, it's our land. You took it, so I have to teach you a lesson. But because Americans threatened us with nuclear weapon, we have to develop nuclear weapon against Americans' nuclear bluff. It's not against my younger brother, India. But I can use this in certain eventuality. Certainly, it's my weapon, I can use it. But I would say, morally, I would never use my nuclear weapon against any non-nuclear weapon state. But they don't believe. They think, in case of necessity, you can do. So what they can do? You can defeat them with conventional weapon. You have nuclear weapon. And you can, do, you can run it again and again. So they have to do. So our argument did not convince them. So their argument never convinced us. So this kind of regional contact with across Atlantic, then Soviet Union global competition, then China-US regional rivalry in Korea, then China-Indian regional rivalry, then for Kashmir, the, the belonging, who should possess Kashmir? Indian, Pakistan for the three times. Pakistan was defeated three times, and India exploded its first nuclear device termed for peaceful purpose in 1974. What a Pakistan can do? Building Pakistan's nuclear bomb. So every country has its reason. Israel lost its statehood 2,000 years ago. And they left Jerusalem, Jewish people. And they were persecuted everywhere. And they were massively killed. Jewish people were killed as many as 7 million during the Second World War in Europe. So they need to have a, a motherland 
to protect Jewish people in the world. They deserve to have a motherland. And Britain, Soviet Union, US gives them a motherland, which is the current Israel. But for 2,000 years, Palestinian, Arabic people lived in the place which is called Israel today. So why they should not have a motherland? So United Nations General Assembly also made the same resolution. To make two countries at one time. One is a country of Jewish people called State of Israel. The other is a country of Arabics, mainly Palestinian, called State of Palestinian. Then Israel considered that in case America would not help in the future, I need to self-defend with nuclear weapon. That would push Middle East country, the Arabic country, the Gulf country, the Western Asian country to think of their own nuclear option. So Egypt started to build a nuclear weapon, but failed. Iraq built two times, partly on Iran, partly on Israel. And Iran may be building nuclear weapon now. Who knows? We just want to Iran to clarify, you are not building to tell us. Iran is hesitant in explaining. Iran is not straightforward in opening its facility to tell, I'm not building nuclear weapon. They want to conceal something. That will make us more worried. Iran may not be building nuclear weapon, but you need to be straightforward in declaring, in opening your facility. But Iran may be hedging. They want to open something, conceal something, to protect something that eventually the concealed stuff would make them to have a break slow. Suddenly, they start to have nuclear weapon. Then there will be no bombing, like a US bombing of Iraq, US bombing of Libya, US and the NATO possible bombing of Syria in, in the immediate future. So this Middle East country, so those African countries, they want to build a counterbalance to Israel's nuclear weapon program. And now, North Korea. So I'm telling the regional connection, the global connection. Each country has a story. If you read its own story, it's quite legitimate because of external threat, because of the, the lack of trust of any other country, including distrust of the United Nations. The UN may not come to your aid when you are in danger. Therefore, since every country has a reason why we want to have a global security, global peace, global civics, we need to address each of the reasons. Unless the reason burn is addressed, is resolved, we would have a chance to delink this nexus. But um, Therefore, we have to address U.S.-Soviet rivalry. Luckily, Soviet Union has peacefully dissolved, but still U.S.-Russia have their strategic competition. U.S. build missile defense in the neighborhood of Russia. Russia considers it a pose, biggest threat to Russia. So President Putin was very much against this missile defense in Europe. So under his leadership, Russia has no trust of America. America considers that it's a minor defense. It can only ex intercept a few missiles. You have thousands of missiles. Why you care this? We did this against Iran. But uh, Russia would say Iran has no ability to launch intercontinental missile striking capability against America. So you must be doing this against me under the pretext of Iran. So I'm very unhappy you are undermining. 
U.S. China. Yes, U.S. helped us to revert to Taiwan in 1945. But the U.S. is also helping Japan to revert to Diaoyu Island, they call Senkaku. And the U.S. changed its position from being ambiguous in terms of defending Japan on the question of Senkaku or not to being clear. Yes, the Article 5 of U.S.-Japan Security Alliance would, in, would oblige America to defend Japan on this question. To, U.S. made it more clear threat to us. And the U.S. helped us to revert to Taiwan but the U.S. government, during the Korean War, President Truman stated, the status of Taiwan is uncertain, pending upon the settlement of the Korean War. So in early 1950, the U.S. withdrew its recognition that Taiwan is a part of China. It says, I'm, I no longer have this position. Taiwan may or may not be a part of China, because China is fighting with me. And Taiwan can be a part of China again, but depending upon the completion of the Korean War. That's a threat to us, a threat to Taiwan, because Taiwan is a part of China. Taiwan government hate to listen to this. They think they have a problem with the mainland, but they are still a part of China. Why America could say, may say they may no longer be a part of China. So U.S. has made itself a threat to China in addition to threatening China by using its nuclear weapon against mainland China for several times, U.S. threat China verbally. So we need to, need to address the root cause. If U.S. would no longer threat China, we may abandon our nuclear weapon. But who knows? India may threat China. Japan may threat China. Vietnam may threat China. Philippines may threat China. There are many others who want to threat China. So why we so naively abandon our uh, uh, nuclear weapon that uh, we have obtained very, with a great effort. So we cannot easily abandon. So if China would think this way, <laughs> you believe any country who have worked hard to get nuclear weapon will be very difficult to abandon nuclear weapon. Therefore, we are constantly living under the threat of nuclear weapon. Global civics says all people under the heaven, living on the surface of the planet, need to work together. You work on your part to reduce your threat to me. I work on my part to reduce my threat to you. If we work mutually to reinforce each other, we have better chance to reduce the nuclear threat. Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The treaty states, by January 1st, 1967, if by this day you have tested the nuclear weapon already, you are called nuclear weapon state. If by this day you have not tested the nuclear weapon, you are called by the treaty as a non-nuclear weapon state. Then, if you join the treaty as a nuclear weapon state, you commit first to abandon your nuclear weapon as soon as possible, but without a data line. And second, never give your nuclear weapon to any non-nuclear weapon state. If you join the treaty as a non-nuclear weapon state, you commit, before you would withdraw the treaty potentially, you never build your own nuclear weapon or seek to get a nuclear weapon from a nuclear weapon state. So this is called non-proliferation. Why non-nuclear weapon states would commit to continue not to possess nuclear weapons? It's because non-nuclear weapons, it's because nuclear weapon states have committed to abandon their nuclear weapon eventually. So this is a great bargain. If they would say, I am entitled to nuclear weapon, and I would permanently possess my nuclear weapon. It's very hard to make the world permanently unfair by asking non-nuclear weapon states permanently 
keep their non-nuclear weapon status. They need to have a balance. But uh, unfortunately, none of the five de jure, de jure 就是法文讲的合法的核武器国家, 就是1968年的NPT条约, the 1968 NPT has legalized the five countries, de jure. None of them has by this day abandoned their nuclear weapon. If we have some nuclear weapon, we should not build more. By not building more, which is the quantity control, by not building better nuclear weapon, it's a quality control. All are nuclear arms control. But control is put a ceiling. We have to lower the ceiling. So US and Soviet Union each would have more than 20,000 nuclear weapons, 两万多件每一个, to go down, go down, eventually to go to 1,000, 2,000. Now they are moving toward 5,000, 3,000 in 20 years, in 30 years. So China has not been invited. We, have not, we do not deserve to be invited because we are too few. We may have 200, 300. But someday, when they have 300, they will invite us. And we, it's, not impo it's impossible for us to refuse. But when they invite us, when they still have 3,000, no way. We don't want to be a great hero. You have 3,000, I have 300, then I join you. It's unequal. We do not think we have ever threatened them. It's due to their threat, we develop nuclear weapon. So why you can still significantly threat us, reducing from 20,000 to 3,000, you still have a significant capability to threat us. So why we should follow? So nuclear arms control and disarmament are different. Arms control is quality and quantity put a ceiling, Tianhuaban. Disarmament is go down. <coughs> Non-proliferation is if you don't have, continue not to have. So if we want to reverse the threat, nuclear weapon states need to lead, meaning all five nuclear weapon states, including China, need to disarm, to make us model, to be a leader. When we no longer need nuclear weapon to defend us, we have more moral power to tell others, could you take us as a reference? you may reduce the importance of nuclear weapon in your national politics. They may still say no. You have formidable conventional force, and we are poor country. We don't have. It's possible. But at least we, have, we will be more powerful, not military more powerful, but more politically more powerful to tell them. And the US is doing this. Russia is doing this. They are go down, going down very rapidly. By, if they would follow what they commit. President Obama became president in 2009, right? One year later, 2010, he cut a treaty, which he called the New START Treaty with Russia, which committed each of them to reduce their nuclear arms by 20, 17 or 2019 to the level of 1,700 to 2,300. So US could have a little more, but very low, about 2,000. Russia would have even more, excuse me, even less, but around 2,000. Very soon, even by 2019, that's only six years, 2,000. And they used to have 20, 30,000 which is 90% of reduction. This gives them more power to tell others, but uh, not enough power, because you can still threaten many countries and destroy many countries for many times. Obama stated a nuclear weapon free world. He want to see it happen, so it may not happen in his lifetime, but uh, he want to make it happen. So he spoke in Czech, Czechoslovakia uh, four years, 
four years ago. In 2009, on April the 5th, he spoke. And now, this is four years later. This is his second term. So next month, I, I have a piece revigorizing the Prague uh, initiative. Revigorizing. Because U.S. say, let's make a nuclear weapon free world. U.S. did not make Russian to believe. Why you are still building missile defense to threat Russia? Why you are, you are defending Senkaku to threat China? So ch why you are beef beefing up Philippines and Vietnam on South China Sea-based maritime dispute? That threat China. So China <coughs> could be less and less uh, interested in going global, going multilateral nuclear disarmament. So we need to revigorizing by upholding the good idea, but by acting. So U.S. need to assure China, I'm not going to threaten you. And China, U.S. will assure North Korea, you would only become more secure if you don't have nuclear weapon. We need to tell the story, need to give them security assurance. Yao lang tam huo de I mentioned NPT is a great bargain. It's a big success. Before NPT, from 1945 to 1968, for over, over 20 years, we have seen the emergence of five nuclear weapon states. For the last 45 years, another three and four nuclear weapon states, namely Israel, Indian Pakistan, and possibly DPRK. So it's a big success. success. Without NPT, we, we would see more. Mostly the world would be more dangerous if we have more nuclear weapons. Students of international politics know that the greater debate, whether there's more nuclear weapon states, whether there's greater security, the Earth's planet will be. The early debate says, one side, yes, more nuclear weapon states more secure, because everyone has a nuclear weapon. The best. The others say, no, so more danger. Now, these two debaters are, are still alive. The one who used to say, more security, start to change, to consider that more dangerous. And we made half success. US, Russia go down. UK, UK uh, France go down. China try its maximum effort not to expand. But China is expanding a bit. But China can expand a lot more. We restrain. And uh, some other. So it's a half success, half failure. By giving this lecture, I try to tell my students, we were forced to develop nuclear weapons. That's our narrative. But uh, that narrative can be used by anyone else. And if anyone else would use this narrative, we would have a very chaotic world. So yes, we have nuclear weapon, unfortunately. But uh, we should help the world to reduce the importance of nuclear weapon in our national politics, in our national security. When we do this, we encourage others to do this. After 10 years, after 20 years, we will change our discourse. We say we are very secure. We have our new security concept, which mainly depends upon our institutional innovation. Our innovation capability of science technology, our strength and competence in education, social welfare, national health protect protection, social safety network, and formidable conventional deterrence. Therefore, 
China would be, be the failure to nuclear deterrence. We would become the first to abandon all Chinese nuclear weapons. Because we are superpower. In 20 years, we are superpower. We will be a new type of superpower, which is the strength of superpower comes from its zidu institution, education, science, conventional weaponry, but not unconventional weaponry, meaning chemical, biological, nuclear. No matter America still has nuclear weapon or not, we no longer need a nuclear weapon. Then we would have huge amount of moral power to tell anyone, Israel, India, Pakistan, and North Korea, my brother, could you mind to take my experience as a reference? And this is what my girlfriend, Akani Haken, stated us, Global Civics. And he sent Mr. Jian Yi to take the video. He raised the money to hire him to hear, to make it, and to present on internet. Then some people will be happy. They think, some Chinese professors say, strategic weapon gave China major power status is controversial. They think this is reasonable. If Chinese will be aggressive, we are major power. We are entitled to have strategic weaponry. You do not deserve to teach us that we do not deserve to have strategic weaponry. You say, I'm so sorry. I have strategic weaponry. I want to abandon them as soon as possible. They don't believe. But at least they think you are not arrogant. You have the sensibility. This is videotaped. This will be on the internet. This will make North Korea happy. This will make Iran happy. Make India and Pakistan happy. And when they are happy, they will be, they would be truly less committed to nuclear weapons. They would be making China more secure. Because I don't believe some more Chinese nuclear weapons would make China more secure. Just like I don't believe some more their nuclear weapons would make them more secure. So before we let them to be convinced, let's convince us we are secure enough without needing more and better nuclear weapons. We would not abandon our nuclear weapon in one day, but we don't need more and better. The world is so unbalanced, so unfair. We are in the middle. When we say US is so unfair by having so many advanced nuclear weapons ahead of us, so why we cannot narrow our distance with you? But we are making more unfair practice by leaving non-nuclear weapon state and a less equipped nuclear weapon state, more behind. This is more broad view. You stand above the Earth planet, not only in Shanghai. So that's my talk. I don't believe China would overnight abandon nuclear weapons. But I believe we need to abandon nuclear weapons. I don't believe the US would abandon nuclear weapon before China would do. But I hope China would abandon our nuclear weapon before the US will do. Before we acquire acceptable deterrence of conventional kind, we would not abandon nuclear weapon. But after acquiring unacceptable un un conventional deterrence, we need to abandon nuclear deterrence. Making China a moral superpower. Ding Mishan is an extraordinary man. I should mention that he was instrumental in getting global ch civics translated into Chinese and published as paperback. He was also kind enough to write a chapter on the Chinese debates 
um, on global civics for the uh, Chinese edition. His framework for advancing China's interests by urging China to be a normative superpower, um, urging China to inspire respect rather than fear and to lead by example and, and with generosity, I find to be highly significant. Um, on the other side of the Pacific, you have the United States where the likes of Kissinger is asking the United States to recommit uh, to a nuclear-free world, uh, which will by definition mean the United States giving up its nuclear arms. Um, now, nobody can doubt that Professor Shen has the best interests of China at heart, and, and nobody can blame any Kissinger for not caring about interests of, of United States. Yet both men um, argue the same thing, which I find to be very interesting and, and very significant. Um, last week, we had to deal with this phenomenon of countries advancing their own narrow interests through public health arguments. And this week, we have differing conceptions of national interest and how best to serve them. And I wonder whether we need a methodology to distinguish between narrow interests and genuine proposals for global welfare. Um, and I think that methodology cannot be any other than open, robust, inclusive debate and an ever more informed global public opinion. I would argue that as the web of our centripetal forces uh, dynamics thicken, that global peer review will be a key resource for us to count on. Uh, for your readings this week, you have two short pieces. One is by Kissinger and Company from 2008 on a nuclear-free world. And uh, the second piece is by Jonathan Schell from 2003 about this new phenomenon of global public opinion and whether we can consider it as a second superpower in the world. The question for your writing assignment is the 1968 Non-Proliferation Treaty and the Grand Bargain um, that is encapsulated in that treaty. I want you to argue what that grand bargain was and to assess the current state of that bargain in 2013. As usual, you have 500 to 1,000 words to make your case.